Hi, I'm Chris Dyer, and today we're going to talk about the seven pillars to a successful company culture. So, hey everyone, I'm Chris Dyer. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. Don't forget to subscribe. I want to make sure you don't miss any videos or any cool content that I might want to send out. And today I'm going to talk about company culture. In fact, the power of company culture. Got my t-shirt and everything. And this really stems from my book that I wrote by the same title, The Power of Company Culture, where the book is really pulled into three separate parts. The first part is what do you gotta do to at least be like good, right? To not totally suck at culture. Um, so we talk about what is sort of the baseline. What are the, the, those minimum things you need to be doing? The second part of the book is all about the seven things that the greatest cultures are doing that you can do too. You don't have to be this giant, you know, huge company. You don't have to be Google or Facebook or whoever you admire from their culture standpoint to be fantastic. Anyone can do this, these things. Anyone can be a leader inside of their own, you know, uh, market or whatever they're doing by really focusing on their people, focusing on culture. Now, the third part of the book is about how do you actually get people to change? Once you have recognized what these things are, how do you get them to change and how do you do, deal with cognitive biases and all sorts of other things. But you can check out the book if you're interested in kind of getting into that change management type of philosophy. But for right now, just for today's video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of those seven pillars. And then what I suggest you do is to think about which one of these things maybe are you not so good at? Which one of these things does your company maybe need help with? Um, well, you might want to bring in a consultant. You might want to spend more time on. You might want to have a meeting about. It. You might want to really make it a, a focus for your company over the next month or year or whatever it may be to really change. Don't go back and say, well, we're just, you know, we're not that bad at this one. We should just get a little bit better. I suggest you find the one you're the worst at and focus there first. Okay, so without further ado, number one on my hit list of things that you, every, every company should be thinking about doing to be a fantastic company culture. Transparency. The best cultures in the world are transparent. Transparent with their employees, transparent with their, with their clients, their vendors. Um, we see extremes of this even to like publishing what everybody makes inside the company. So there's absolutely no secrets about that. Now every company has to decide how transparent they can be inside of their market uh, with, you know, confidentiality and with, you know, trade secrets and all of that. But the more transparent, the more information you can give your employees, the better. They will make better decisions. They'll help you save way more money. Okay. And they will have fantastic ideas. If they don't know what you don't know, you can't possibly ask them to come up with great ideas and find ways to help you save money and to innovate. Okay. Number two, positivity. So there's this really cool movement called appreciative inquiry, where we look at what's working first. We look at what's good. We work at what we're doing, look at what we're doing well before we start running around trying to be problem solvers. And this really involves a process of dreaming of how it could be better. Now, the example I love to give is if a client calls you up and says, I'm mad, right? We typically think about how do I get that client back to where they were before they were mad? That's called the status quo. Appreciative inquiry says, let's talk about what's working and let's try to figure out how we can get you to a spot that is not only where you were, but beyond that in happiness. How do we talk about how do we be a better provider to you by having a larger conversation at that moment of tension? All right, number three, measurement. Man, I can't tell you how many great companies are so good at measurement. I can't tell you how many companies are so good at measurement. They are data driven. They know what to focus on, what to ignore. You know, it's not analysis paralysis. They are looking at the right data and they are measuring and measuring and getting a little bit better all the time. The more we can measure things, the better decisions we can make about who's doing well in our company, about which goals are being you know, actually accomplished, where do we maybe need to work on to get better, and maybe who's not a good fit inside of our organization. But if you don't measure these things, you're not thinking about these things, then it's left to politics and assumptions and someone just trying to figure it out on their own. We need good measurement. Okay, the next one, number four, acknowledgement. If your company does not have a clear and distinct way on how to recognize people, you are failing. 
Now, my company, we prefer that it's sort of this bottom up scenario that everyone is empowered to acknowledge and say thank you across the company. This is not top down. Now, there are other types of recognition programs. In fact, I even did a big case study on uh, Caesars uh, Entertainment inside my book. Well, they have a completely different recognition program that wouldn't work for us and our program wouldn't work for them, but they're a completely different organization full of casinos and hotel workers and, and, and you know, tens of thousands of clients coming to their properties every day. What's important is that you have a great program that works well for your company that you can rely on over and over and over again to ensure that people know what they are appreciated, that they're thanked for the things that they do, and there's some way, some mechanism, this isn't being gamed, right? This is not like some program where people get points and then they get bonuses or what, that stuff, that stuff doesn't work, okay? People will game that and, and be selfish with that. What we want is sort of this more altruistic, just a thank you. It goes, it goes so, such a long way that's so important inside of organizations, we have to make sure we have a way to institutionalize this and make it a part of what we do every day. Okay, number five, uniqueness. One of the things that companies do is they will tend to get into this rut uh, in something we call group thought, where everyone is sort of thinking the same way, we're trying to keep the status quo going, and that is really detrimental to innovation and to change. Some organizations will break that apart. They find some way to break free, but a lot of organizations die because they're just trying to keep the status quo going. So if we start celebrating what makes us unique and we start talking about what makes us different, it helps us stay competitive, innovative. It also helps us with our, excuse me, our diversity goals. So we have to be talking about celebrating and thinking about what makes us different, what makes us unique as individuals, as employees, as a company, uh, inside of our marketplace. So we have to be able to articulate that, talk about that, and be able to successfully um, use that as a brand strategy for our company. Okay, number six of my seven, so there's two more to go here, number six, listening. Gallup uh, had a really fascinating stat in one of its recent uh, large, very large uh, reports. Uh, that 85% of employees say the most important uh, factor for engagement for them was being heard. So not more money, not, you know, lots of other things we could think of. They, they want to be heard. So how do organizations ensure that we are hearing our employees? We can think about this in mass, right? Are we doing these big things to make sure our employees are being heard? But also, are we having these smaller interactions from our direct manager, our direct reports? Are we ensuring that everyone feels heard? doesn't mean we have to do everything that they say or, or think about every you know, possible thing that comes up, but our, at least they have the opportunity to be heard. We also wanna make sure that we're listening to our, uh, our clients. We're listening to those stakeholders inside of our organizations. I did a huge webinar not too long ago for a major, major financial institution, and we had 4,000 leaders on a call from uh, all around Asia Pacific, and it was all just on listening. This was one of their most important initiatives so think about if, if they're thinking about this, about listening more to their clients to ensure that they are hearing what is important to them, because that brings in innovation, that brings in good ideas, that brings in, you know, really customer satisfaction. It's a huge thing. And if your company is not really, really good at this, at listening and ensuring the other party feels heard, you are missing out. Okay, finally, number seven on the top things that any company needs to do to be a fantastic company culture, you have to know how to deal with mistakes. Now, let me define something here. Not errors, but mistakes. Errors are bad calculations. They're things that should be avoidable. Mistakes are, I was trying to do the right thing, but it didn't work out. I had a good idea. I went and tried something and it didn't work. And we want to talk about these things. We want to celebrate these. We want to make sure that our team knows about them. We can learn from each other. We can improve and iterate from them. And we should be thanking people and celebrating them for trying something new and then having the guts to come back and tell everyone, guess what? This is what I tried. And man, it didn't work. It, I failed. And then figure out how we can either, maybe it's make sure no one makes that same mistake again, or maybe there's an iteration that needs to happen so we can get to success and can get better. All right, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Uh, send out all kinds of stuff on leadership, culture, uh, remote work. Uh, love to have you be a part of that. And uh, hope you enjoyed today's uh, video. Thanks, everyone. Bye.